This is the goal, a digital twin that encapsulates the dynamics of the system that allows you to test your controller code against a virtual model that represents the real thing. It allows you to investigate questions of vibration, of motor sizing, or even general control strategies before you have to build or possibly rebuild anything. This is what MapleSoft means by virtual commissioning. But how do we get here? We do it by following a well-defined sequence of steps. We've started with your CAD model. Maybe we've used it to grab some inertias, maybe some kinematics, or just the graphics that we want to use for the simulations later on. We've imported it into MapleSim, and now we can hook it up to the other multi-body components within, or the 1D hydraulics to actuate it. For this simple system where we've got a hydraulic actuator moving a platen, we've got some friction acting on a cylinder, we've got a simple hydraulic circuit, and to simplify the control that's going to be happening external to this plant model, I've got a loop going that basically specifies the set point and the motor or the pump speed that's powering this hydraulic circuit. Assuming at this point you've already run a variety of simulations, you're happy with the results, happy with performance, maybe you've done some parameter sweeps where you vary something uh, and sort of see how the design holds up, and at this point you're ready to export this model and test it against your controller code that's going to be living on the PLC. How do you do that? Well, the first step is to take this model and wrap it in a subsystem in MapleSim. So here I've taken that model I put some things that are coming from the outside, so my control signal, the command signal to the directional control valve, and I've got some outputs. Um, these are the things that are either sensor data that's coming out that my controller is going to need, or just things that I'm interested in uh, during the simulation. <clears throat> I confess I've put a fairly simplistic controller here. It's just a PID. In fact, I've just put a P controller on it. But it's enough or sufficient for us to demonstrate how we can export this plant model and build this up in our PLC. So how do we get this out of MapleSim? I put it in a, in a subsystem. The next step is to go to the FMI export app and simply <clears throat> select a few options. Most of these are all default, really. Co-simulation is the key one you need depend, uh, if you're exporting to an automation target. You define a target name and hit generate. Once that's done, you can now go to your automation tool and start doing your programming. So we're going to take a look at Studio 5000 simulation interface. The first thing we're going to do is load that FMU that we just generated, or that I generated a little while ago actually, but have copied over to this machine. And now I'm going to load the ACD file that goes along with it. This is my control file or my PLC. My, the, the, the file that contains the controller code for my PLC. Once that's there, I verify that the communication paths are set up. Specifically, I want to point that to the sixth slot on my virtual uh, PLC here. <clears throat> and then I want to download the program. So this downloads this module uh, to the PLC that I've got, or the control board that I've got. I should say that this ACD file, I've already generated ahead of time, but if you want, you can generate one that's going to automatically take the tags from the FMU uh, and sort of create a shell ACD file that you can add your programming into later. You can do that if you press this information button here and select generate. So now that we've got this set up, we can go about connecting the tags. What's really happening here? is that we've got a plant model, that's the FMU, that's going to be running alongside the control program in the ACD file. But they have to be able to communicate back and forth, and they do that via tags. So you can select a tag, drag it across, and say this tag from the FMU attaches to this one in the ACD. Now if you've got a lot of these, it can be quite cumbersome. So there's a nice option here to auto-connect. And when you do that, it'll automatically piece all the tags that you see that have the same name to their counterpart in the ACD file. Now, quick pause. If you'll recall, where did these names come from? Take a look at this subsystem that I generated. Command was the input, plant position, pressure A, pressure B, power, and set point. These are identical to the names that you see appearing here as the tags for the FMU. 
And these are the names that I then put to simplify my life in the ACD file. Once all these things are done, I can go to the Start Simulation tab. Now I'm going to be running this in the uh, operator training mode, so I'm emulate OTS turned on. I usually turn the acceleration to 10 when I do that. And the last piece that I want to do is launch Mapleson Insight. Now Insight is a tool <clears throat> that's sort of a, a companion to Mapleson models. When you export an FMU, you can use Insight to basically do the plotting and visualization for that FMU. So it's not just the code that we're going to be running. We're actually going to be able to see this thing running while we go. I'm just going to hide that panel. You can see I'd run and saved or stored off a previous simulation uh, that I've been doing. The reason I load a previous is it, it allows me to bring back up sort of the default views that I had uh, in my simulation. Now that that's ready to go, I've loaded it here. And I can hit Start. That's going to actually launch the FMU, start it running, as well as start the ACD uh, program running on the PLC. You can see that's up and running here. And if I look over to Insight, I can see the actual motion of the physical plant being controlled by the controller. And you can see the controller's got some work to do. There's some choppiness here <laughs> in the response, but that's okay. The whole purpose here is to be doing this testing, to test the system, with the dynamics uh, and, and test out my controller. So I'm actually going to pause the simulation because I know I've got work to do on my controller. And I'm going to go over to Studio 5000 and go online. Now I'm going to need to upload the model. That's fine. It's going to go off and do that. And once it's done, I'm going to actually be able to edit and modify the control code as the system's running and actually see how the response or see what the response is. You don't have to do this live, of course. You could be doing this separately while it's, it's running. But let's go back uh, and start that simulation up again. So we're going to continue the simulation. It's going to keep running. And now I'm going to go here and let's say I've got, maybe my gain is too, too tight. I'm going to uh, reduce it and see how that affects my system. So now I can come back. You can see that vibration that was happening at the top is greatly reduced. I still have a little bit of wobble here. I've got some work to do on my controller. Um, but it's an improvement from what I had before. And this is the kind of back and forth that you can start doing, playing with your model, once you start using something like Simulation Interface, MapleSim, and its companion app, MapleSim Insight. With these tools, you can start to do virtual commissioning and test your controller code against a plant model with dynamics before you build anything.